Hi, it's Gary. Welcome to today's video. Well, if you're watching this on the day of release, Merry Christmas to you. Today, Fountain Pen Focus Day, Christmas themed. It's the Bennu Talisman. The actual name for this pen is Dragon's Blood. I call it my Christmas pen. Just look at that green and that red shimmering away. Absolutely love this. What we're going to do, take a look at the pen, do some size comparisons, some weights, some measures, a writing sample, then I'll give you my thoughts and some scores for this pen. Welcome down to the mat. Here we've got the Bennu Talisman. It's my one and only Bennu pen. Just going to show you this. I think this is a beautiful looking pen. Just look at these sparkles. Now this pattern is called Dragon's Blood. I often call this, and to my wife when I'm talking about it, it's the Christmas pen. Because this to me, I know you may have heard me saying this time after time, it shouts Christmas decorations. That's all I can really see with this. It's such a beautiful pen. Let's take a walk through the body. So we start at the top. At the top, I'm just going to hold this on an angle. There's a dome. It feels very slight, but it's an, a definite dome. That material going all the way through that. We come down and then we've got a sharp taper until we get to this line here that's running around. This is the ring that the clip attaches to. So hopefully, I don't know if you can see it, we've got the clip attachment there between the body and the clip, but it's part way down the clip. So I can work the clip just by pressing on the top. So it's a bit like a lever. Nice, simple idea, works really well. From that, we then start to go into the cap itself. Now this is faceted, the whole pen is full of facets. So we've got some small facets, about the size of my finger there. So we've got a facet, we've got another, and that's going all the way around. Hopefully you can see how they catch the light. We've then got some more facets, bigger this time, maybe two fingers in width, and slightly offset, so we've got a definite look there. You know, they're not all in a line. And as we go around there again, hopefully, I'm trying to get so that they catch the light a little bit. We come down from these facets, we've got a little bit of a ring going around. Then in this black material, again, we've got another little facet. Now these do appear to be in line with that bigger facet. On the front of here, we've got the word Bennu, which is the name of the manufacturer. We then drop down, and this is a noticeable drop down. What's happening, because we've got the facets, it's flaring up a little bit as it comes towards the end. Then it drops down. Now this drop, I would say, might be maybe three millimetres, but you do notice it. We come down to the body. The body, again, we've got facets. So we've got, as we're going around, this first part, there doesn't appear to be anything. We've just got like a hexagon. So we've got flat sides as we go around. But then can you see where at the ends just got this little dome as it comes up and that's what's forming that facet. Again next to that we've got some more facets like with the cap these are offset so it's not the same line which gives I say I think gives a nice little bit of a texture to it as you're using it. I'm hoping that these will catch the light as I'm going around. On my preview I can see the big one catching the light but the little one's not so much now, oh, there we go. Maybe that's a bit better. After that second lot of facets, we've just got the end cap. No facets, just goes around. And up at the top, there we go. We've just got, again, what feels like a flat surface, but actually domes inwards. I can never remember if it's concave or convex. I think it's concave. Ever so slightly. Very pretty pen. Very nice to look at. Let's take off the cap. So we come off in half, one, one and a half, two, 
just under two and a half turns to take the cap off. And that reveals this gorgeous nib. This is a Schmidt nib. I have to be careful how I pronounce that. That's about the third time I've tried to pronounce it and it came out with something completely inappropriate. This Schmidt nib, it's a broad, it's steel. It looks quite pretty though, doesn't it? So we've got a nice border, got a breather hole. Underneath that, we've got a fancy B, B for broad. I used to think it was B for Bennu, but then somebody pointed out, no, it's actually the nib size. I think that looks really nice, but for someone like me, when I'm getting a broad nib, I got a little bit confused because it's a Bennu pen. It's a B name for the pen. Anyway, underneath that B, we've got Schmidt and then Iridium Point. So it's a German nib that's in there. The nib goes into the section. The section has got a little bit of a flare out at the bottom. Looks quite thin. That comes up. Then we've got the threads. Removing the body, we can see this is a cartridge converter. Now, the fittings, they're all plastic. Inside, it's all plastic. So although I haven't tried it, I do wonder if it would be possible to eyedropper this pen. I don't have any intention of doing so, but I just wonder if it's possible. As you can see, we're virtually out of ink, and the ink in there has got a nice blue shimmer to it. Let's close this up. Pop the cap back on. Let's swap over the view, and we'll do some size comparisons. Here's my first comparisons. Standard set, Pilot Metropolitan, Lamy Safari. All three pens are roughly the same size. Let's pop the caps off and take a look at them unposted. Unposted, the Lamy, a little bit on the longer side. Look at the nibs. We've got a Pilot number five nib here on the Metropolitan. We've got that standard Lamy nib there on the Safari. Then the nib on the Bennu, that's a number. I'm not sure if it's number five or number six. I always get confused with this one. The length of it always makes me think it's a number six nib. But to be honest, it doesn't really matter because it's the way it writes which is important. Let's look at these posted. Posted, the Bennu, roughly the same size as the Lamy. If I line the bottoms of the nibs up though, ever so slightly longer than the Lamy. A lot bigger than what we see with the Metropolitan. If I show you in my hand, posted, it looks quite long and Although it's not moving at the moment, this wobbles very easily, doesn't feel very secure. Unposted, really nice to use. So this is a pen, like to be honest, most of my pens, I never bother posting it. But if you're into posting, you can maybe think about that. Let's swap over and look at some pens that are in roughly the same price range. The two pens I've brought in, I've got a Visconti Breeze. This is in the blueberry colour. It cost me 163 Australian dollars. The Bennu, I paid 167 Australian dollars. And then I've got a Narwhal Nautilus in Palasia Nautiluca. I know, I've just butchered that. That was 196 Australian dollars. All three pens, you know, very, very similar. You know, if we look at the, at the shapes of the Narwhal and the Breeze, very, very similar there. Then we've got these little domes here also on the Benny. Let's take off the caps and look at them unposted. Unposted. To be honest, yes, there's a little bit of a size difference between the three of them. Not really that much that you notice. The nibs, though, we've got a number five here on the Visconti. We've got a number six on the Narwhal. And when we look at the Narwhal, next to the Bennu. This is what's making me think it might be a number six nib. I'm not going to show these posted because neither the Visconti or the Narwhal post. Let's get these out of the way and we'll fetch in the rule of measuring. Here we've got the rule of measuring. Let's fetch in the pen. So with the cap on, the full length is 13.8 centimetres. Uncapped, and unposted, that comes in about 13.05, so 13 centimetres. As I said, you can post it. I wouldn't really recommend it, but it is possible. That gives you a length, if I can get to stand still, 
of 16.7 centimeters. The size of the body at its widest part is 1.34 centimeters with a cap that comes in at 1.69 centimeters. Then the section that goes from 1.01 down at the bottom all the way up to 1.09. So it does taper out and you can feel that and notice it. Let's get this out of the way and fetch in the scales of weighing. Here's the scales of weighing. So the full pen, 22 grams. The body alone, 13 grams. The cap, 9 grams. Not a, an overly heavy pen. You can feel that when you're using it. But again, to me, it's good that it's not so heavy because it's one which disappears when you're writing. Let's get this out of the way and we'll fetch in the notepad of testing. Here we've got the notepad of testing. Here we've got the Bennu pen. I've just been agitating it because it's got that shimmer in there just to hopefully give it the best chance of coming through. So we've got here a Bennu. And the model is Talisman. And this, it's a broad nib and it cost me 167 Australian dollars. The ink, it's my now my new routine to use this pen and the same ink every December. It's by Diamine. And it's called Garland. Love this ink. We'll take a closer look when we actually look at the discussion part. Drying time, there's immediate. Here's 10 seconds. 30 seconds. I'll go on to the next line, one minute. After a minute, what well, was still fairly wet, let's do a two minute test. After two minutes, yep, look at that, nice and dry now. Not the quickest drying combination. Now, the whole time I've been doing that, I have been agitating the pen. Hopefully, we'll see some of that gorgeous blue in here. I'm going to move the mic, write a sentence. love writing with this pen it's got beautiful feedback hopefully you could have heard heard that as well let me just move this up so as well as getting audible feedback you can feel it you've got this gorgeous tactileness line variation no pressure with pressure so that little bit of pressure that i'm putting on not too hard but you can see a difference be careful you don't put too much pressure on you don't want to spring your nib Let's do some S's, so no pressure, with pressure, no pressure, with pressure. So where I'm coming down with a little bit of pressure, you can still see slightly wider line. So you can get a little bit of natural line variation with this, not a lot, and certainly don't go pressing it too hard. Flow. we go keeps it really nice so what are my thoughts and scores for this pen we'll start with pen looks just gonna move this paper down a little bit whilst I do that as well I love the looks of this pen we've got the black background but just look at these sparkles now one of the things that puts me off a lot of Bennu pens they're just too sparkly you know it's not a pen that I would be even remotely interested in using you know it's just got too much but with this this is absolutely gorgeous i love the way it shines i especially like this pen 
to use this time of year. You know, we're talking 25th of December this is releasing. So this has been a pen I've used throughout Advent. And to me, it's such a Christmassy looking pen. Pen looks, I've got to be honest, there's only one star I can give this because it's so pretty. 10 out of 10. Build quality. Again, I've had this about a year now, had no issues with build quality. You know, it works nice, the threads are nice, you know, the body uncaps. It's been inked up, I would say, in the last 12 months, it's been inked up 9 out of those 12 months. Not had any issues but one. And this one issue, I think, was a Gary issue. Start of this month when I took this out of storage and inked it up. Inked it up like I normally do. Put the cap on. Left it about 10 minutes. Came back, thought, well, let's write with it. Took the cap off. All the ink was inside the cap. The entire converter full of ink had been dumped out. And I thought, oh dear me. Well, I didn't exactly think those words, but you know what I mean. But when I looked, the nib unit which screws in was loose. And before I put these away into storage, same with all my pens, is I like to take them down as much as possible. So I'd unscrew the nib unit, put it through my sonic cleaner. So when I put it back together again, I hadn't screwed that nib unit in far enough. So that's why when I'd inked it up, all the ink just escaped. Tighten this nib up, literally about two millimeters is all I turned it around. No issues since then, it inked up straight away and had no problems. Not really to do with the build quality, but just a little tip if you're going to be stripping these down. Build quality though, nine out of 10. Writing experience, absolutely love this. Now, hopefully on here, I can see we've got this nice red sheen there. Hopefully that's coming over on the camera. We've got this beautiful green back color, We've got the red sheen, then hopefully we might see the blue shimmer. Not sure what you're seeing on the camera. I only have a small preview, so I can't exactly see everything, but hopefully I might be able to capture some of that for you. What I'm going to fetch in is my Gale and Leather Notebook, 52 GSM Tomoe River paper. So here's this ink and pen. You know, this was written actually a year ago. Once I've got a combo in this book, I don't rewrite it. I just go back to it. But look, wow, I love this combo. It is so nice. I'm hoping on here you might see some of that blue. Again, it's not really jumping out at you. I do find that the blue shimmer is fairly subtle. Let's just move this up a little bit. Yeah, again... Got lots of sheen. Not really seeing much though in terms of the shimmer. The pen, it fits nicely in my hand. As I say, unposted. Happy to use this unposted. I love the feedback. Hopefully you heard that when I was writing my Grumpy Wizards. There's nice feedback. I like feedback. I like the tactile nature. When I get a nib which is like glass, I actually don't enjoy using them. And to be honest, I would try and introduce a bit of feedback if it's something that I'm going to be using a lot. Writing experience though with this pen, it's 9 out of 10. Ink flow, most of the time, no problems. In my test today, no problems. I do get an occasional skip, but it is very occasional. And it's something, you know, you notice it and you can quickly go and write over that letter again. Ink flow, 8 out of 10. Comfort, nice pen to hold. I've said time after time, fits well in my hand. The section's nice. I would have liked it to have been a little bit wider. I hold my pens down near the bottom of the section. Just feels a little bit on the thin side. And if I'm doing a longer writing session, I do feel it in my fingers. They start to ache a little bit. That's my only complaint in terms of comfort. So again, eight out of 10. Value for money. It's quite a nice pen. You know, it's $167. It looks nice. It writes nice. It's definitely a pen for this time of year. Although this year I have used it at other times. I may actually put this away until next December. I think the colouring is pretty. 
not really something though that goes down well if you're in a business meeting is it you know certainly and i know this is going to sound sexist certainly as a bloke you get strange looks if you walked into a meeting and started using this you'd get away with it in december because you say well it's for christmas it's good value for money as i've already said the only reason i haven't got another Bennu, they are just so blingy they're just so sparkly there's a couple which i've got my eyes on i think there's a bourbon one but it's now a case of saving up the money for them because obviously they're not cheap but for what you're getting i think you're getting good value so value for money i'm going to give this an eight out of ten so that means the total score for the Bennu Talisman in Dragon's Blood, or as I call it, Christmas, and Diamine Garland is 8.67 out of 10. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I love this pen around this time of the year. I think it's so nice. But I also use it during the year. I'm, I may use a different ink rather than the Diamine Garland. It's just quite a nice, pretty pen. What are your thoughts on this pen? Have you got some Bennu's? I know a lot of them very, very sparkly, aren't they? Please drop any thoughts, any questions down below. Let's kickstart the conversation. Please hit the thumbs up button every time you like, every time you comment, just helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.